Hello again folks, this is Barry from Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair and I've got another pretty cool video to show you guys. Uh, on my website uh, my videos have for predominantly been my demonstrations of uh, FM conversions I've performed on customers uh, car radios and uh, I've been promising for quite some time that I would start including some uh, stuff on home units and so uh, now is my chance to do that. I have recently repaired a uh, this really cool Craig Pioneer uh, 8 track player, which is a standalone deck. It does not have its own speaker amplifiers. It's a standalone 8 track uh, deck. And uh, since uh, most home 8 track players, or actually 8 track players in general, since they're all fairly similar in operation, uh, to, uh, to prevent my videos from becoming too monotonous and boring, I'm only uh, doing videos on some of the, the unusual features on some of these decks. And so on, on this deck, we have a, a pretty cool feature. Uh, and I'm going to whip the old overhead cam into the picture here so we can show you a, f a few cool things. There's the... Okay, where we go? Okay, there's our overhead cam. Uh, and this, uh, this video is going to go into the elaborate mechanism uh, used in this particular model to, uh, to hold the tapes in place. Uh, with most 8-track decks, I would say probably 90% of all 8-track decks, when you push a tape in, there's this little roller here that is it, uh, it's basically held in place pushing this way by a strong spring and when you when you push your tape in you know what I'm just going to simulate the, the the normal type of deck here's a normal a normal deck with the roller in you push your tape in and it moves that roller aside and then when the tape is finally in position to play then that roller snaps in place to hold that tape in place on this unit it's quite a bit more complicated than that and before I demonstrate the function I'm going to just make sure that it's that it works because I'm lo lose track of uh okay there we go okay it's working so I'm going to demonstrate uh, the elaborate mechanism uh, that uh, used in this particular model Craig Pioneer uh, to hold the tape in place and this was actually the problem with the unit when it was sent in for repair uh, and so uh, it's a really cool uh, an unusual method of holding the tape in place. It's, uh, it's pretty similar to the mechanism used in a 1970 Chrysler uh, radio 8-track player. And uh, the way that it works is as you start to pull your, as, as you start to push your tape in, you run up against this little paw right there. You can see the tape is touching that paw and that you keep pushing the tape in, that paw goes back to where this metal plate gets close to a solenoid. And at the same time, right about now, the 8-track tape is also engaging a power switch which energizes that solenoid. So we push that tape a little farther, and boom, the solenoid grabs onto that metal, hold, holds that tape in place. Keep the volume down a little bit since this isn't really, this isn't really a demonstration of the musical quality. It's more the, the mechanism. And the customer is most likely watching this video because I just... Uh, explain to him that I'm making this video in, uh, to be posted this evening so he'll probably see this video this evening and he'll be able to see that his machine is now properly repaired because this was the problem and now uh, to, uh, to release the tape we just push an eject switch and it, all it does is cut it cuts power of that solenoid allowing the mechanism to spring forth and push that tape out enough to grab onto it so I uh, Unfortunately, that's about as exciting as this video gets, but uh, there are a couple of uh, precautions. Anyone who uh, wants to try to fix this mechanism is uh, really not uh, not doing a good thing because this can be a very uh, a very touchy and delicate and sensitive operation. Um, I've been working on 8-track players almost exclusively for the last 11 years. I've been working on them off and on since about 1973. Uh, I actually made my first money in electronics uh, repairing TVs at age 13 and 8-track uh, players were a part of that activity also. Uh, so I don't recommend that the layman try to fix this problem. I, I very much recommend that it's sent in to me for repair. <coughs> Excuse me because it can even take me hours with my experience to get everything tweaked properly on this. Uh, but basically, uh, you have a, a series of adjustments uh, that when, once they fall out of adjustment, then it won't hold the tape in properly or it'll hold it in too tight. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and briefly explain uh, what these adjustments are. Now that we know basically how the machine operates, let's go over that again. We push the tape in, push it against that paw, which moves that plate close to the solenoid, and now we're going to connect the power switch by the cartridge moving in. Solenoid grabs the tape, and it starts playing. And we'll 
we'll just go ahead and let it play for a little bit so the customer can hear the result of my work. And just for fun, we'll pop in a couple of more tapes, including some that I've had trouble with on other decks. Some of them pretty boring, some of them pretty cool. This is Temptations. Okay, now we'll pop in a Partridge Family tape, everybody's favorite. Now the complaint when this unit was sent in was uh, inconsistent speed and uh, the fact that some tapes wouldn't play at all. So we're going to try a few different tapes here just to make sure that it plays properly on all tapes. I hope nobody thinks any lesser of me because I, I do love David Cassidy's voice. Uh, when the Partridge family was st first starting out, none of them played instruments or sang, and everything was done by studio musicians. Uh, David Cassidy actually had to convince the producers that he could sing, and uh, that was actually an understatement. He is actually an excellent singer. He's got great vibrato. He really knows how to use his resonant pockets to make all the notes sound strong. He sings with passion. I really like David Cassidy's voice. Okay, one more tape we're going to try. We've got a cathedral quartet uh, whatever this stuff is I have no idea what it is but it's a tape that I've had trouble with with other decks so let's pop this in and make sure it plays also Well, I guess we're going to have more trouble digesting it than playing it. Uh, but anyway, the tape's working fine, uh, regardless of how boring the material is. So let, now let's go into uh, how crazy this mechanism is. It's way more complicated than it needs to be. And some manufacturers like Akai, Woolen Sack, uh, some of the high-end manufacturers, they kind of had their own way of doing things. They're going to make it real nice and fancy. Unfortunately, those are machines that are the hardest to work on today, uh, and some uh, require parts that are no longer available. So it's really best to go with a machine that uses the simpler mechanisms. They tend to be more reliable, but uh, these mechanisms are cool too, as long as one knows how to, uh, how to work on them and adjust them properly. But um, so let's just take a look at uh, what can be adjusted on this machine. First of all, this paw that the tape is now pressing against, that paw can be moved in and out that way. Uh, if, it's in, if it's in too far, then the tape will not push this plate far enough to, uh, uh, for the solenoid to grab it when the solenoid's activated. Uh, if it's too far out this way, then it will, uh, it will press against a solenoid sooner than it should, and the tape will not go all the way in and lock in place. So that's one adjustment. We move this. We can move this paw back and forth through these screw adjustments. Uh, another adjustment is this little plate here can actually be bent forwards, backwards, or even clockwise or counterclockwise, so that it makes the best possible contact with that solenoid. And as you can see. We're actually just a touch misaligned, but trying to get it any any uh, any more square than that uh, would have been a lot more work and possibly would have made it worse. Uh, and then now we have the real kicker. We've got this little rocker arm mechanism here. Uh, as the tape presses against the pawl to activate the solenoid, the rocker arm causes the retention roller to go into where that tape notch is and you can see the rocking the rocker arm action and how it uh, how it works in conjunction with the pawl and the solenoid and everything to get the tape uh, firmly locked into place uh, this rocker arm was actually mounted a little bit too far that way from the machine to work properly and I actually uh, removed it drilled another hole about an eighth inch about an eighth inch this way so that that uh, retention roller went inside the notch. It was actually more outside the notch than in uh, originally, so I corrected that. That's not unusual in my shop. I frequently uh, have to make minor changes to the design to get these units to work properly. Uh, I'm not really sure why they would design it like that other than the fact that maybe it was just uh, the way the engineers did it. The machine was already in production and they just decided, well, let's just leave it at that. It works good enough. Who knows? Uh, but at, at any rate, uh, we've got, uh, so we've got one adjustment here. We've got the ability to bend that plate 
to adjustment. We have an adjustment that I created, meaning that we can relocate that rocker arm. And then the f and then the last adjustment is how much tension the roller presses against the tape. Uh, there's a little screw adjustment with a spring. Uh, if it's if it's adjusted too tight, uh, it won't let the tape go all the way in. If it's not adjusted tight enough, it won't hold it in. Uh, with enough uh, with enough force so that's one two three four adjustments I had to make one of them which I had to actually invent uh, being the industry's uh, top dog of eight track repair it was my duty to do that so this is another reason that I don't recommend the layman to try to mess with this part of the machine is uh, they can easily make things worse uh, can actually damage stuff and it may require uh, a, a working knowledge of how a tracks work in general uh, for a long period of time to really effectively uh, get this thing to work right. So uh, let's go ahead and move to another view and we're going to demonstrate to my customer uh, that his machine's working properly. Let's switch views. Okay, we got her on the on the bench now where the camera can can uh, see it. And let's just go ahead and pop this machine in and let it, let it play a while. But let's change the material a little bit, can we? Let's do uh, Temptations instead of Partridge Family. I'm not really that crazy about Partridge Family. So let's listen to some Temptations. Switch tracks a few times. That right there was one of my absolute favorite songs of all time, Ball of Confusion. I don't know which song is coming out next. It sounds like I got the volume a little bit high. And incidentally, if the balance does not appear to be perfect, it's not the unit. It is, uh, it is my sound system that I use for this. Uh, it's the most elaborate sound system of any vintage audio repair shop. Uh, it has no fewer than 300 knobs that I have to uh, uh, keep in proper adjustment for all the balance to remain uh, remain uh, properly balanced along with my voice mixed in just let this tape play a little while make sure that the speed remains consistent okay I think that's a a pretty adequate demonstration so we're going to pop this tape out and we'll do our, our little fond farewells and all this so let me see if I can find myself again on this system there I am this is Barry with uh, Barry's 8-track and classic car radio repair if you have a machine that you would like serviced whether it be uh, an 8-track player for home car or a, a vintage car radio up to 1980 say uh, I uh, also do FM conversions on radios. I do uh, power upgrades to the amplifiers, Bluetooth, and USB. You can uh, reach me directly at 928-533-9666, or you can visit my website. That's barrys 8 trackrepaircom B-A-R-R-Y-S, number 8, trackrepair.com. And uh, another one of my websites that's probably easier to remember is classiccarradiorepair.com. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.